Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and in this video, I want to look at verifying our circuit analysis of an AC circuit by building a breadboarded circuit and then actually measuring some of the AC quantities. And this is going to allow us to kind of get experience with AC signals and generating them with an arbitrary waveform generator and also looking at them with an oscilloscope. And so here's the circuit we want to mess with. We have an AC voltage source uh, that is given by this expression. 2 sine 2 pi 100 t. And it, written in this form, we immediately know that the amplitude is 2 and the frequency is 100 hertz. Okay, so the, and since there's no offset or no phase, you can immediately know that this is, you can immediately recognize this in this expression. Uh, and what we want to do is drive two resistors in series. And so 150 ohm and a 1k ohm. <clears throat> and what I want to do is I want to calculate what the voltage will be across V1 and V2 and also verify that the frequency is the exact same as the source. Okay, so we want to find that. So basically we know it is the same 100, but we want to actually measure it and verify it. Okay, so what I want to do is I've made a little little sheet right here and I'm gonna basically build a, a little breadboarded circuit and I'm gonna go ahead and first of all I'm gonna measure my resistors to make sure I have the right values and then I'm gonna calculate what I think the amplitudes are gonna be and then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna measure I'm gonna I'm gonna measure what I actually see and this will be where I drive in a sine wave using the analog discovery and I measure the V1 V2 and also VS using the analog discoveries oscilloscope okay all right so let's begin with this. Okay, so I'm going to start working on my circuit. And so the first thing I need to do is I have to go in here and I have to measure my resistor values. Okay, so I want to make sure that I have the uh, the exact resistor values. So I got 150 ohmer and then I got a uh, a 1k. And so I know that these are just nominal values. So let's go ahead and clip on clip on let's get all trusty out here and let's do this I want to measure measure this and my 150 looks like about 187 uh, 180 not 180 148 okay so 148 all right thank you and what I'll do is I'll record that right here so I got 148 so 148 ohms and then <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and measure my uh, 1k so I go ahead and measure that and let's see what I get for that I change it to the right scale and I get 988 okay so let's get put 988 in here 988 ohms okay life is good <clears throat> uh, now what I want to do though is let's go ahead and do some calculations all right so I have my resistors and I'll put those over to the side and if I look at what I can do to calculate V1, I can, I'm gonna actually just use a voltage divider expression, okay? So that's a very simple way to get V1 immediately. And I know that, or what we've discussed is that the sine wave component of it is just going to, you know, the, the frequency is gonna be the same in all the, in all the components and the phase shift is gonna be the same because I only have resistors in this circuit and a source and all I really need to do is use the amplitude in my voltage divider expressions and I will actually find the right value. So let's use that assumption or use that and see what we can do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write V1 is equal to Vs multiplied by R1 over R1 plus R2. And that is the voltage divider method to find our V1 in the circuit. And so now I'm going to use my real values. So I'm going to plug in here 2 multiplied by 148 over 148 plus 988. And then let's just pump that into Buddy and see what we get. So I'm going to go ahead and go 2 times, open a parenthesis, 148 divided by parenthesis 148 plus 988, close the bottom parenthesis, close the top parenthesis equals. And I'm in, I end up with 260 millivolts. And so that expression right there means I'm going to have a sine wave across V1 that looks like this. It's going to have 260 millivolts as its amplitude. Okay. All right. Makes sense. <clears throat> or maybe. <laughs> Okay, so now let's do V2. So V2, we're going to use the voltage method, voltage divider method again. And so I have, in this situation, I have Vs. And I'm going to have R2 this time over R1 plus R2. And so then I go ahead and pump in my values. And I got 2 multiplied by 988 over 148 plus 988. And lo and behold. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> drop my uh, drop my phone on the keyboard there. All right, we're good. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we will say <laughs> two times open parentheses 988 divided by open parentheses 148 plus 988. Close the bottom parentheses. Close the total parentheses. Equal, and I get 1.74. Okay, so 1.74 <clears throat> volts. Okay, life is good, and. You know, notice that if you added those two together, they'd be exactly two volts, and that's KVL, right? Okay, so life is good. So those are those are the numbers that I have here. So I'm gonna let me put those in the table. So I'm gonna have 260, 60 millivolts, and then I'm gonna have um, 1.74 volts. And now here's the funny part. What's the calculated frequency? Well, it's gonna be 100 hertz because I know that it's gonna be the same frequency in all components. So I'm gonna go 100 hertz. And that's just based on everything that we've covered so far. Now we get to go and actually measure it and prove to ourselves that that is true. So let's begin. Let's, let's build our circuit. Okay, so first and foremost, where does the AC voltage source come from? Well, I'm gonna use the analog discovery for that. And so here's my analog discovery. And what I wanna do is I want to <clears throat> use the arbitrary waveform channel out of this thing okay and so what i want to do is i want to come out here and it's w1 is going to be the arbitrary waveform generator channel and i'm going to use this as the plus side of my ac voltage source and then what i'll do is i'll use a ground which is a black lead as the negative side okay so what i need to do is i need to somehow plug this into my breadboard and so i'm just going to use you can use uh, jumper wires or i took some of these pin headers that come with the analog discovery and i just cut them apart and so i'm going to go ahead and stick that in one of my one of my terminal strips, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do the negative side of it right here, and that then represents the AC voltage source once I turn it on. So let's go ahead and build our circuit while we're sitting here. So I'll go ahead and grab my, let's do the 150 first. So straighten out the leads, bada boom, go right here, and there's my 150. And then I'm gonna come down here, I'll go ahead and put that in the same terminal strip with that guy and I'll come down here and pop it in there make sure it's in there give it a wiggle wiggle <clears throat> and now I just need to connect that to that but it's easier just to move that over to the terminal strip okay ah, there it is now what do we do it's time for us to turn on the <laughs> turn on the arbitrary waveform generator and then use an oscilloscope to measure this so let me go over here and start up waveforms so I got start digilent and then uh, waveforms and so here we go right here <clears throat> and I'll move the camera over here so you can see the breadboard and I'm ready to set up my waveform so I go into wave are you going to uh, wave gen is the tool and let's look at the settings I can have I can have a sine wave I can have a square wave uh, the default is a sine wave which is nice for the frequency we'll want to enter in 100 Hertz and it'll automatically update the period for me. You can either enter the period or the frequency. And then for amplitude, I'm gonna go two, and then that's it. And notice that this swings up to two volts, down to negative two volts, okay? So exactly what we want. No phase, no offset. Uh, symmetry, you always leave it at 50% for a sine wave. Okay, so that is it. So now if I run this thing, I have a sine wave in my circuit. The only problem is I can't see it, right? And so now what I wanna do is I wanna actually view it with an oscilloscope. So let's go over and go, um, let's see, so I go to workspace, and then uh, welcome screen, sorry. And go scope, <clears throat> and here's what we got. So it extends you out of the video, back we go. Okay, so now I have two channels on here. Let's go ahead and just run it and see what we get. And so I'm running it, let's go ahead and stop it. You gotta connect it, <laughs> okay? So we gotta connect it. Let's go ahead and let's measure VS first. So one plus and one minus are the, the oscilloscope channel one okay so that's the orange waveform you're going to see and so again i have to connect it so i'm going to grab a pin header here or one of my breadboard jumper wires and make sure you use the positive side that does not have the white strip on it that is the plus side and i'm going to connect it right there right next to my positive side of my ac voltage source and then i'll grab the negative side and i'll go ahead and put it down here on the negative side of that voltage source and now let's run it and see what happens so i go ahead and say run holy moly there it is so i got a sine wave 
I had to I had to have a trigger set up, but luckily the trigger always defaults to zero volts and so in rising edge. So just using a standard sine wave that has that zero crossing right at uh, zero volts, the trigger was already set up for me and it worked really nice. And I can zoom in and out by holding the control key and I can use the scroll button like that. Uh, or you can come over here and you can zoom in and out like doing this sort of stuff and make it bigger and smaller. Uh, but it just happened to land right on the screen. And so life is good. So first, first of all, let's measure the uh, amplitude of this and see if it's two volts because that's what it should be. So if you come up here, these are called quick measure. And what you can do is you can do a free measurement where you just click somewhere and it tells you the, the parameter or the X, Y coordinate, or I can do a vertical. A vertical is nice because it'll actually it tracks the, uh, it's a, like a cursor that tracks the, the waveform. And so notice that it's got the little C1 down here that's moving up and down and telling you the value. So as I go up here, I get to the peak and it's two volts, 2.002. .002, and then I go over here and it's negative two. And so this tells me that this is indeed a two volt amplitude sine wave. And so all I'm doing is measuring what's coming out of the arbitrary waveform generator. But at least I know how to do the measurement. Now, if I want to figure out what the frequency is, I come over here and I click on this tool, which is called pulse. And then you can just come over here and hold it right here and you can look at uh, the distance or the time between the time of the period of this sine wave and then also the half period. So in this situation, look at the frequency, 100 hertz, life is good. So the, what I've done is I've verified to myself that I indeed have right here, I've got uh, two volts and I have 100 hertz. <laughs> life is good. All right, so now let's do this. Now I gotta measure the V1 and V2, but it'd be cool to have it on the same screen as the V source. So what I'm gonna do is let's use channel two of the oscilloscope, and that's the blue. So what I'm gonna do is I'll grab another set of pins here, and I'll go ahead and make sure I got the positive side here, and then I got the negative side here, and I can put these across a component to get the measurement, okay, the voltage measurement. Now you gotta keep track of which side you determine as plus and which one is negative. So if I come in here and go, across there to there, that gives me the voltage across R1, and I put positive on the left, negative on the right, so that matches the way that I drew my circuit. Well, lo and behold, look at this little fella. So we got a little guy, and this is kinda cool. Um, you can use this same kinda tool here, so if I come over here, turn it on, let's go ahead and do the vertical again, and what is it tracking? So it's not tracking R, so what we wanna do is we'll do this. I'm gonna go ahead and select I'll do this, turn that off for a second, and then I'm gonna do the vertical, and let's see what it gives us. So it's like 261 millivolts, that's interesting. And then we'll, we'll do this, look at the period of this, and it's 100 megahertz, or excuse me, 100 hertz. So now let me turn this back on and compare them. 261, let's go see what I did my calculation here. Oh baby, oh baby, look at this. 261 millivolts, 100 hertz. Lo and behold, we got exactly what we thought. <laughs> All right, now let's measure V2. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my oscilloscope and I'll carefully disconnect it and put, put it in the new location. So it's like, okay, okay. When you pull these out, it's gonna try to pull everything out here. So everything goes glitchy. So I'm trying to pull, here's channel two and I gotta get the pin out of there. And then without disconnecting everything else in the circuit, boom, boom, boom. Okay, so I got my pin back in there and I got bada, bada, bada. Boom, oh, look at this. All right, well, let's take a look at what this is gonna be. So right here, let's go back to vertical, and I want it to track the blue, so let me turn off channel one, since so it'll default to two. 1.738, 1.738. What is that? 1.7, let's see, 1.74 about. Yeah, yeah, about 1.74, okay, that's cool. Now let's look at its frequency. So I come down here, 100 hertz. Well, lo and behold, look at what we calculated before. We'll, we'll give it 1.73, just so that we don't cheat too much. <laughs> it's 100 hertz right here. Look at this though, this is, this is awesome, number one. I mean, think about what you just did. First of all, you just built an AC circuit. You used an arbitrary waveform generator to create the sine wave. You did math to calculate what the sine waves should have, the amplitudes and the frequencies of the sine waves across these two resistors were, and then you verified it with an oscilloscope. And that is awesome. Okay, nice work. So that is it for this video. Great job, and we'll see you.